let's use the sum and difference formulas that we've discovered for sine and cosine, and I'll also talk briefly about tangent. Um, here's the basic sum formulas. Cosine of u plus v is cosine u cosine v minus sine u sine v. Sine u plus v is sine u cosine v plus cosine u sine v. This minus is kind of funky, but we actually, the way we discovered this, we actually discovered it secretly in I squared, which is super cool. Then there's the difference formulas, which are very, very similar, and you don't really absolutely need to memorize them separately. They really come from the first two, if you just remember that cosine of minus v is cosine v, it's an even function, and sine of minus v equals uh, minus sine v. That means that if you plug in a minus v in here, these signs are both going to switch, because these, these, these have a sine v, the cosine v's are not going to switch. And so that's the, why the pattern of signs flips. Now, we're going to use those in explicit numerical examples in a minute, but let's go ahead and get the tangent formula as well. Tangent of u plus v, we just write its definition. We write <coughs> that that is sine of u plus v over cosine of u plus v. And then we use these formulas, and we get something that looks really messy. In fact, I'm going to just go ahead and beep, boom, and copy and paste. But it turns out that that simplifies a bunch. And this is a good example of the kind of manipulations we're going to be doing with trig identities pretty soon. Um, I'm going to divide everything by cosine, because I want tangent to appear. I'd love to have a formula for tangent that only mentions tangent over here. To be honest, it's a little bit much to expect, because cosine mentions cosine and sine, and the sine sum formula mentions sine and cosine. It's actually really nice that tangent is going to be all in terms of tangent. Here's how we do that. We're going to just multiply, or we're going to divide, let's see, we're going to multiply by 1 over cosine u cosine v on the top, and of course we can have no choice whatsoever once we've made that decision. We have to multiply by 1 over cosine cosine on the bottom. Here's what happens. Sine u over cosine u is tan u. Cosine v over cosine v is 1. Cosine u over cosine u is 1. Sine v over cosine v is tan. Hey, look, that denominator, that numerator is exactly what you'd naively guess for tangent of a sum, sum of the tangents. Of course, it's not true. Life's not that simple. But the, the numerator is exactly what you'd like it to be. Now, the bottom, cosine u, cosine v, hey, these match exactly. That's 1. So this over this is 1. Minus, and now sine u over cosine u is tan u. Hey, cool. Sine v over cosine v is tan v. Sweet. That's really actually really nice because it's all in terms of tan u and tan v. It's not just the sum, but it's, it's pretty close. Okay. And then tan of u minus v, just to complete the whole, all six of them, or all, um, yeah, all six of these guys. Uh, we're just going to plug in minus v instead and use the fact that tan is an odd function. So we're just going to change the sign very much like in the other ones. Okay. So now, let's do examples. Or maybe three. We'll see if we have time. Um, one is calculate the cosine of 195 degrees. Okay, that's not an angle we know off our chart. We want exact answer here. We don't want the calculator. So we need to figure out how to make 195 degrees out of angles that we do know. Well, it's got a 5 at the end of it there, so maybe we can make it as a sum of 45. This is often the hard part here. It's just some, some arithmetic. How do you make a number out of building blocks? It's a really good just exercise in numbers. Hey, look, it's 45 plus 150. We know those individual guys, so we have a good chance here. So that's going to be cosine 45 degrees. Uh, times cosine, oop, not cis, cosine of 150 degrees uh, minus, because that's that funky minus sign, it's really an I squared, sine of 45 degrees, I guess I didn't really need the parentheses on that first one, sine of 150 degrees. And those we do know exactly. That's root 2 over 2. 150, that's 5 pi over 6, that's the far left one so it's minus, so let's put the minus sign down here, root 3 over 2. And then minus, well, sine of 45 degrees is also root 2 over 2. And sine of 150 is just 1 half. And then we just got to have to see if there's any kind of simplification. Well, we're getting minus, the de common denominator is already a 4. 
and that's a root 6 minus root 2. Oops, control R. Okay. And so we could then just change that, put the minus in, and do minus plus. Not a big deal. Okay. So it's kind of a funky answer, but it is an exact answer. Okay. It's not the most powerful use of the cosine sum rule, sum rule I have to say. Um, another example would be tangent of 165 degrees. So that's going to be, well, let's see. Can we express that as a sum? Well, yeah, we could do the 45 degree trick again. It's tangent of 45 degrees plus 120 degrees. Now, sometimes it's better to do it as a subtraction. And you could probably do this. This You could do this as like 210 minus 45, for example. But let's just do it as a sum. And now we stick it into the sum formula. That's tan 45 degrees plus tan 120 degrees over 1. And now it's minus. Remember, that's, that's, that's that minus sign coming up again. It's really an I squared. Tan 45 times. That can be a little confusing. What's that times doing in there? Well, it's because the cosine and sine sum formulas do have multiplication in them. And that's one thing we discovered. OK, and now we can just fill in the blanks. So that's 1. Oh, tan 45 is really nice. That's 1. Ooh, tan 120. That's the high. That's the steep negative slope. And so it's a negative root 3. And then 1 minus. OK, and then tan 45 is 1 again. And tan 120 is still. Oh, but it changes to a plus now, because it's minus a minus root 3. OK. Now, that one, we'd probably want to rationalize. OK. So we're going to take that, and we're going to multiply by the conjugate of the bottom, which happens to be exactly the same as the top, over itself. Ah, yes, we love that, don't we? So it's going to be 1 minus root 3 quantity squared. So that's 1 minus 2 root 3 plus root 3 squared, which is plus 3 all over 1 minus 3, because this is an a, a squared minus b squared. And so that's going to be 4 minus 2 root 3 over minus 2, or it's going to be uh, root 3 uh, minus 2. OK, so it actually simplifies to a pretty nice number. OK, one more. Here's another one. Um, simplify some weird looking expression, namely sine of um, 23 degrees. Actually, no, let's do um, 63 degrees. Cosine 18 degrees minus cosine 63 degrees sine 18 degrees. Whoa, that's weird. And the claim is you can do this without a calculator. And you can get the exact answer without a calculator. The instinct would be, oh, I'm going to calculate sine 63 and cosine 18 and cosine 63 and sine 18 and just multiply it out and subtract. That's not a good idea. And you're not going to be able to do it and get the exact answer. The key is to recognize the pattern. Sine, cosine, minus cosine, sine. Hey, that's the sine difference formula. That's sine 63 degrees uh, minus 18 degrees. And you know what? That's sine of 45 degrees, if I do my arithmetic correctly. And that's root 2 over 2. So whatever these bizarre numbers are, we don't even know them or care what these individual numbers are. When you put them together in this combination, you get a simple answer, root 2 over 2.